So with Microsoft gaining support for Windows 10 next year, and possibly also because of the announcement of the recall feature, you're probably considering switching to Linux, but are wondering about the pros and cons about it. Well in this video, I'll attempt to give a fair summary of exactly that. Let's get to it. While Linux is a decent operating system, it's not perfect. It does have its upsides and downsides. Let's start with its upsides. What are the positives of Linux? The first thing that I thought of for this list is privacy. It has become pretty clear that Microsoft collects at least some information about how you use your computer. This is used mostly for advertising purposes, however if you're using a Linux distro, you do not have to worry about that as most Linux distros do not collect any information on you whatsoever. Another pro of using Linux is that you own your own hardware. When you buy a copy of Windows, you're not actually buying something to own. What you're really buying is a license to use that product. Additionally, Microsoft can set arbitrary restrictions on what you can use their product on, evidenced by their Windows 11 hardware requirements. Microsoft can also refuse to allow you to update your operating system if they decide to do so because you do not meet their requirements. This is unheard of on the Linux side of things. With Linux, you can essentially install it on whatever you want, however many times you want. There are no arbitrary restrictions put in place by anyone. You're free to do with your hardware and software as you please. Personalization Although personalization might not be on some people's list of things they value when it comes to using an operating system, I think it most definitely counts as a positive. You can go to town when it comes to making Linux look and behave how you want it to. You can install custom themes and move things around as you please. No third party software required, except for when using GNOME. Linux is incredibly versatile. You can install it on nearly anything, although it's commonly used to revive old hardware that has long been unsupported. You can install it on anything really even if that hardware is still supported by its manufacturer, but most commonly on hardware that's not supported by its manufacturer anymore. Now now, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Linux has its downsides too. Firstly, if you're a professional who relies on software like the Adobe Creative Suite or productivity software like Microsoft Office, you're SOL because those particular pieces of software do not run on Linux. Even when using a compatibility tool like Wine, Getting either Creative Cloud or Office to work is either really difficult or downright impossible. Certain video streaming services that require DRM do not function as well in Linux as under Windows or Mac OS, since Linux lacks the necessary components that video streaming services require for their DRM. Their videos will not run at anything above 720p resolution, sometimes not even running above 480p if we're talking about Amazon Prime Video. There are probably some video streaming services that do fully work in Linux, but a lot don't. While game publishers and Linux itself have made great strides when it comes to playing games on Linux, there are still some games that don't work. This is mostly relegated to titles which have anti-cheat. Unfortunately, some of these titles are huge titles like Fortnite and Rainbow Six Siege, among others. However, things are getting a little bit better on this front. And while not every game may run on Linux, it's nice to see some progress being made in this space. But for sure, things aren't perfect right now, and may never be. But the improvements are appreciated. Hardware support is kind of finicky. While Linux works great on even slightly older hardware, if you have brand speak and new hardware, you may need to wait a while for drivers to be available for your hardware. Or you may just need to use a distro with a brand speak and new kernel. For example, if you want to use Linux Mint, but have newer hardware that was released after the latest version of Linux Mint was released, you'll have to try your luck with Linux Mint HWE, which gives you a newer kernel with hopefully better support for your hardware. Adding to that, USB Wi-Fi dongles and even some Wi-Fi modules still aren't well supported in Linux. If you were to pick up a random USB Wi-Fi dongle on Amazon, 
it'll likely not be officially supported on Linux. And while Linux has seen massive improvement in the hardware support space, when it comes to these specific cases, it's still lagging behind. While certainly there are things that I may have missed in this video, it has been my thoughts on what are the pros and cons to using Linux at the time of the recording of this video. So I hope you guys liked it. Peace. Thank you.